Hey, folks, Quilly Keen here, and welcome to a brand new Let's Play of RimWorld. This is a series that's going to be called, I don't know, maybe Au Naturel, because we are doing the, uh, what's it called? Naked Brutality start. We are starting with a single pawn, no one else, no equipment, no gear, no clothing, nothing going on. This is one of the built-in default RimWorld scenarios, and, uh, it is going to be extremely challenging. This might be one of our shortest RimWorld series ever. We are playing on the highest of the built-in difficulties right over here. We're playing, we're going to use Randy Random because you know what? Turns out he's quite a lot of fun. I like being able to not predict when the next raid is going to come and, you know, plan trips around that or anything like that. So we're playing on Losing is Fun, the highest difficulty preset. Technically, you can go more difficult if you go and tweak uh, these settings and custom, but well, I think this is going to be plenty difficult for me. I'm running my standard suite of just quality of life mods, which is user interface stuff like Rim HUD and things like that. Technically, there are two um, mods that very tiny change the gameplay. One is called Tweaks Galore. I can do a lot of things, but the only thing I have enabled for it, as far as I know, um, is that Where's a good example of like this debris that exists on the map? Well, these are small. Some of the debris that pre-starts on the map, some of it you can deconstruct and some of it you have to attack. And I hate having to micromanage my units to attack. Um, it looks like it's not going to matter here because the center of the map is pretty bare in terms of debris. Well, I guess there's this over here. Uh, I like just to be able to tell my pawns to deconstruct instead of punch it. Basically makes very little difference. I'm also running the no authors mod for crafting, which isn't going to matter at all for the start because we just have a single pawn. So it's not like there's going to be any any weird conflicts over there. Uh, check the link down in doobly-doo for more information on my mod list. So that's the situation. In terms of overall goal for this, well, I mean, first of all, just survival. Secondly, we have an ideology. So we have an ideology that I'm currently just called Meism. The backstory for our character is that our character really decided that she wanted to create, I didn't pick a gender, this is just who I happen to roll. We're gonna be looking at her stats relatively soon. Um, she apparently decided, you know what would be a good idea? Starting her own occult. We're gonna start our own cult, and she was on her intergalactic ship, and she was trying to recruit people to her cult, and they got kind of sick of her, and so um, eventually they just ejected her out of a drop pod onto a random rim world over here. Now, she Wanda here still has the idea that she wants to start her own cult. Um, we are doing a fluid ideology here. I've not touched anything where everything is on the default. As a fluid ideology, you do have to choose one meme. I'm choosing proselytizer over here. We are gonna try to convince people to join our cult, but that is it. We are gonna have to accrue reformation points over here so that we can go and change our precepts and add extra memes and different things like that. Um, I did go and set up four holidays so that we could have max opportunity for us to um, uh, uh, generate those reform points. Two of them do recruiting and t uh, the other two, I've got one that will let us discover a um, an ancient site and one of them that will give us a faction boost. Um, mo the, the, the random recruiting is probably the strongest one, but I didn't want to overdo it. I wanted lots of holidays so we can make reform points, but I didn't want all of them to necessarily give us a person. So we'll see how it goes. Um, I didn't even tweak the relics or anything over here. I was like, is this hammer? You know what? That sounds fine. We'll put that in. Um, I've basically enabled all the uh, hairstyles and tattoos. All the tattoos I think are set to rare, but uh, anything can, it can appear. It's all good. Groovy. So that's going to be our thing. Our thing is going to be to try to actively recruit people to our, our cult and then make some modifications as we go. Maybe we'll become transhumanists. Maybe we'll become raiders. I have no idea. I think we're going to kind of let the story tell us what's going to happen. But before any of that happens, we have to not die. So let's go ahead and take a look at Wanda over here, uh, who is who is a child spy and then became a corporate manager. Um, I did use the random plus mod to uh, facilitate rerolling. I didn't tune this. I didn't use like prepare carefully anything like that. But I did ro use random plus to make sure we got someone who was not incapable of anything, didn't have any real health problems, um, and um, I might want to make sure we didn't get a gourmand or a pyromaniac, and I want to get good traits. She got. Very luckily, we got two really strong traits over here. Now, is it as strong as if we'd gotten tough or even super immune with a solo start? That might have been the best, but it's hard to complain about these. Hard worker is really good. I think industrious is even better than hard worker, if I recall correctly, um, but that's not bad. 20% global work speed. Wanda's going to do everything a little bit faster. And then fast learner, she's going to learn everything a little bit faster. 75%, actually 75% is a considerable amount faster um, than default, which is really good. 
Um, I'd also, I had put in a minimum that we'd get level four construction, uh, crafting and uh, planting. Although she got two in there. Maybe didn't set it right. Or maybe one of these took away two points of her planting. I don't know. Yeah, I thought I'd set it so that we'd need at least two points of planting so that we'd, uh... oh no, I didn't do that. I think I only asked that there was at least one tick of social passion because it's going to be very important for recruiting people and converting people. We're going to need at least one person with high social skill. And if Wanda wants to start her own cult, she's going to need the social skill in there. I guess that was it. Um, I'm pretty pleased that we got the passion in construction. Passion in shooting's also nice, although it's going to take a while before this turns out useful. We could make a bow early on. I'm just, I'm, I'm partially wondering if we might be better off with a club, but maybe because she's got the passion for it, <clears throat> we will go ahead and craft a bow uh, early on. We do get the normal, in terms of tech, we get the normal industrialist tech starts. We start with electricity, for example, but uh, with no material, no steel, no components, um, not even any wood to start off with, it's going to be a little dicey. So I got myself a little checklist on the side here of priorities to make sure that everything's going to be okay. Um, and we roll the map with uh, larger hills. I thought about like the advantage of a flat map is that you can really build a large structure and like follow a grid very, very nicely. Um, but we, I think we've done a flat map the last couple of times. I'm like, let's go with something a little bit more hilly. And overall, we've got kind of a na relatively naturally protected over area over here. Not exactly, so we're gonna have to seal these in with walls. So breachers will still be perfectly happy to come through here, but um, Overall, it's not going to be too bad. Um, and we do have in that semi-protected area a nice fertile location. The very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go and plant some grain. Although I will give you a glance at the world in terms of where we are. Right over here, we've got a friendly neighbor to trade with, the Fordo faction. Um, the other, the friendly tribals are all quite far away. We might still get some trade caravans from them, not as much. We do have a very near... Um, um, Emperor faction, Empire faction, and we might go down sort of like royalty type stuff. We'll see whether or not we per pursue an explicit victory condition. We'll find out. Maybe we will. Maybe we won't. Um, it's going to be kind of an organic playthrough, and we're going to see how it develops. So we're going to set up a growing zone. I think the uh, rule of thumb for growing zones is about 20 tiles per pawn. It depends a little bit on whether you can grow year round. Here, I'm going to do that area just to fill that in. Um, and in this case, where we are here, we can grow year round. Um, I picked this place actually less. I hadn't actually even checked the year round stuff. I actually just picked it because it was a convenient location um, in terms of our neighbors. Uh, I hadn't actually double checked the temperature. I'm very happy for the year round thing. Not entirely just because of the food growth, but mostly because it means that the temperature in this zone is generally going to be okay. You can see 17 to 27 C. That's really lucky because a lot of the year round growth areas get really hot in the summer. And uh, I mean, we're in April, May right now, which is good, but it could get quite hot. And if, unless I rush electricity, we're going to have an issue with um, with keeping our characters cool. So yeah, we've got our little growing area over here. Now, it's a really good thing I wrote this down on my checklist. I actually had uh, done a start test run of this sort of thing before. And um, I really wish the growing zone would actually start with like nothing selected, like a null thing, and it would give you an error over here of like, hey, you didn't select a plant because it's so easy to accidentally leave it on potato. And what we really want to do here is start on rice. There's a couple of different reasons for it. First of all, this is fertile terrain. Potatoes don't really care about fertility. They do get a boost, but it's very small. If we're going to be planting on rich soil, we want to take advantage of that by growing either rice or corn, which have, um, I think, 100% fertility sensitivity, which is much better. But we specifically want the rice because it's got a very short growing period, which means we will have to wait the minimum amount of time before we get our first harvest, which is great because we didn't start with any meals around. Um, we will be reliant on getting a few um, berries. I hope there's some berries. Okay, some berry bushes over here. Don't do double click. Harvest fully grown. Okay, they're both fully grown. Yeah, well, uh, I mean, we don't necessarily need to pick it first thing. Well, let's take a look at Wanda's work priorities here. Firefight, patient, doctoring, number one. Uh, oh, yeah, I'm running the capture them mod, which just lets me box select to capture instead of clicking on individuals, which is good. Hall plus is part of the um, the allow stuff mod, something like that. Um, basic for flipping switches. That's going to be good. And I'm going to put grow and plant cut on a two. So it is really unfortunate. Her plant skills only two. It's going to take her a long time to chop down trees. Uh, and also her plant harvest are not going to be very good to start off with, uh, which makes me a little happy. Maybe I designated 22 tiles. Um, rather than anything else, but yeah, we'll do that. So planting is number one priority. 
plant cutting second. If there are any trees in this area, she will go and cut that down. I'm going to go and also... Um, I want to use the, uh, the harvest fully grown here because chopping down a tree that's not fully grown, like you can click and check, like some of these uh, can be chopped for wood, but you're not going to get as much, so we may as well let it grow. Most of my quality of life mods just mean that I don't have to click as many times. That's basically what we're running here. It's mostly a vanilla run other than the no authors mod, which every time I try to do a run without it, I just get mad at some point because the pawns start doing stupid stuff. And then the... Um, Oh yeah, the, the deconstruct mod for, or the, the, the tweaks galore so that I don't have to get people to punch things like ancient pipeline things or whatever. We can just flag a deconstruct, which just, again, means less clicking. Okay, I think we can go ahead and unpause Wanda. So I want the planting to happen, and then we gotta chop down some trees before we can consider building a shelter. Now, unfortunately, there's not kind of a pre-made shelter ready to go in this area. Uh, there's a few walls over here, but I'm pretty sure we're gonna wanna be near the rich soil area over here. So I think we'll be making a small little storage spot. Oh, we got some jade. We can make some pretty wall stuff. That's gonna be quite nice. The mech stuff over there. Uh, wildlife, there's quite a lot of it right now on this map. There is a cougar and a timber wolf that could hunt us if it gets near. One thing that's nice, if we wall this off, there's actually not gonna be as much likelihood that those things might path to us because when they get hungry, they'll hunt the nearest thing to them. And if one is the nearest thing, that would be bad. In fact, we might end up just walling off this valley a little quicker than I might normally expect. That is one of the advantages to having this, this relatively rocky map here. So yeah, Wanda is working on planting right now. She'll automatically cut down this tree because it's, it's gonna over overlap the growing area so we don't have to flag it or anything she's going to do that as part of the growing job but yeah go ahead and get that started and let's run up on speed three for a tiny bit turkey that's those are going to be good for hunting um yeah no animal skill i mean we're at a four but that's not going to be useful enough for anything and so in practice she's going to be doing the colony's construction and then yeah trying to recruit people is going to be her jam It'd be nice if she had the passion for crafting because we could take the I, I don't there might be more than one meme but i know human supremacy meme gives us the production specialist which is construction and crafting happens at plus one level which is or plus two plus one plus two is inspiration i think um but anyway which is really 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 quite good um although i guess in practice we'll probably we'll probably put her in the uh one of the leader type positions right well, I guess the leader position. Although she might benefit more from being the cleric, like the moral guide, because they have the convert power and she's going to have a high social skill. But I mean, I think I think conceptually we have to have her be the uh, leader. I mean, unless she wants to be the cult leader and handle the religious side and let someone else do the day to day administration. That, that could be. I mean, she does have the corporate manager, so leadership sort of kind of makes sense, but all right, she's doing a little recreation, which is fine. Um, let's let her do that while we do this. Oh, yeah, I took uh, like the spike core or whatever it is um, aesthetic look because I don't know if we've done a run for that. And it is quite interesting. There's a lot of stuff that gets spiky. Let's draw. OK, so we got a plant there. We clearly don't want to overlap any of this. Can we tuck in? OK, we could do. So 13 by 13 outer perimeter or 11 by 11 inner perimeter is the biggest size that you can do without um, having any sort of support columns or anything like that for the roof. So it's a very good size to kind of build around. And now I part of the thing with this not being a flat map means that we can't just grid, but also, you know, always going on these grids can be visually unappealing. Um, this is going to be a difficult game, so the idea of the grid is going to be pretty strong just on the basis that, yeah, it's just a very, very practical sort of overall layout. Um, we can do some subdivides in here because if you um, if you slice this in half uh, from here in here, you end up with this really nice sort of five by five bedrooms, which is actually a pretty decent size. Uh, for things so there's a lot that you can do with this in general so I'm just gonna go and say all right we'll draw some out because this works kind of okay as a start actually um and then we can always join two of these together because you actually don't need the support wall over here uh, at all you could have a double wide 
um, grid and it will work perfectly okay. You can't do an L shape because then there is going to be one tile that's a little too far somewhere in there. But this could turn into a big giant communal room. We could do a stockpile room over here. And in the short term, what we can do is if we do make it that big, we can have a kill corridor over there. Although I think in practice, we're going to do an earlier kill corridor, maybe right over here by kill court. Just a trap hallway is what I mean. Turn that off. Wanna, you do need some food. Tell you what, why don't I go and encourage you to stop resting and come over here, harvest that and then harvest that one. So you've got a little bit of food available on the map for you there. Because you are going to want some food pretty soon. There you go. And actually, why don't I... I'm just going to flag this in the stockpile. We'll probably end up moving some things very quickly, but just because you're here now... There you go. Let's do a high priority haul. Ah, you're only grabbing one. That's unfortunate. But you'll at least have brought it there, so it'll be a little closer to where you work. Okay, so in terms of our first little setup here, what I want to do, because ultimately I'm going to want these walls to be stone, and I'm not running the replace stuff mod, uh, which I do like, and I don't think it's particularly the game breaking, um, and it is very convenient, but I'm other than the two that I felt like I couldn't live without, I am trying to avoid any mods that change gameplay too much. Um, some people do like heavily modded runs, um, but if I'm going to do something that's not ridiculously heavily modded in terms of flavor, uh, most people seem to appreciate it if I leave it mostly vanilla-ish. So what we're going to do is rather than build on the outside over here, because I'm going to want to build a stone wall, I'm going to build an inner wooden wall first, and then we can build the, the stone wall and then just rip apart the wooden wall afterwards. Um, so we'll do something like that. I will plan on putting the doors where they're going to be over here. Because one of the things to remember in a rim world is that diagonals count as ceiling in a room. So this room would be totally sealed. And these doors like this would also totally seal in the room. And then later on, these wooden doors can stay where they are. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to forbid most of this. Because what I want first is I want a smaller room that we can build very quickly. So we're going to do this and then I'm going to not allow everything, but allow. You know, maybe when you're running, why can't I see it? Oh, I lost selections right, right under my mouse. I tend to do that. I don't look where my mouse is. because I just assumed it's not there. Um, right, and then I will also need a door uh, for this area. So I'll probably do something like that. So this is going to be a totally legal little area. Tiny thing just to quickly start. Then we'll build the rest of the wooden walls, tear apart those. But yeah. We need things to happen relatively quickly. We will need a little bit more wood, so it's fine that she's still chopping down some of these trees because we don't have enough wood currently to finish this. Oh, um, forbid the rest of the doors except for this one over here. There we go. So yeah, we have our our overall grid layout that we may or may not follow strictly the whole way, but at least we have an idea about where things lined up, and it turned out to actually fit very nicely within this space. Um, I mean, I could have shoved everything over slightly to the left or slightly to the... Well, too much to the right would have encroached on our growing period area. To the left is fine because we can always mine some out. I mean, we could even use some of the stone as part of the wall, but I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of happy with this. Yeah, no bed, no weapon. I, I mean, we're not going to have a day one bed. I, I don't think things are going to be sealed in. Uh, just to get rid of the notice, I'll go ahead and put a sleep spot over there. This is a, the better sleep spot assignment mod, I think, lets me do the select and right click, which is nice. It also has a slightly different screen over here, which is just lovely. All right, Wanda, go faster. Yeah, she chops down these trees really slowly. There you go. Have a few berries. That's not going to be enough to fully satisfy. I think you need like 20 raw berries to fill your food. Oh, speaking of raw berries. So raw berries are the well, one of the few raw foods that are safe to eat. I think under animal products, there might also be milk, which I think is safe to eat. What I want to do is two things. First of all, the very first food thing or, or clothing thing or drug policy um, is the one that gets assigned to all new pawns, pawns that join you, uh, babies, etc., etc. So um, what I've taken as a great thing to remind myself of this is instead of being called lavish, call it default because this is what everyone's going to get. And you can make a new one for lavish. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off all raw food other than berries. And I might I'll probably turn off the berries later as well. Um, even if Wanda gets desperately hungry, uh, what can happen is sometimes she's so hungry that they'll eat like a raw piece of meat that you were planning on cooking. It's like, listen, just take two seconds, cook it and then eat it rather than eat it raw, where you get a penalty debuff, you might get sick and then you don't have enough raw food to cook anymore. And it's really annoying. So we'll do that. We'll do the same thing for the outfits. Default. Um, I'm not going to set any restrictions in these outfits right now. 
and then drug policy default. The drug policy is one of the trickier ones as well, because what'll happen is you'll get like Imperials that come to visit you and they'll have a drug addiction. Um, but then they take drugs to satisfy their addiction and then they get mad that they took drugs. So we might want to change the default to not allow any of this. I don't know. I think for now, we'll go ahead and say it's fine if you've got this. Um, we could turn off the recreation aspect. Uh, could be. But I don't know. I'll, I'll set what I'm, I'm likely going to want, which is going to be panoxiclin every five days. If you've got an addiction to these, you can use it. And then otherwise, these two are safe for recreation. But that might get a change later on. So we'll see. But for now, that's going to be just a little bit of bookkeeping is going to be all right. Oh, that got flagged for chopping because it is going to be under construction. Yeah, we're not going to be able to get the shelter up the first night, which isn't ideal because we're going to have a lot of uh, debuffs. Hopefully we don't like accidentally trigger a mental break because we do have the extra like I'm naked kind of vibe, which is not ideal. Unless, can I rush a bed for at least a little bit of comfort? For your first night's sleep, actually. There you No, 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 get up. Reassign. Close that. There you go. Normal quality bed. That's not the perfect stuff, but at least you'll, you won't get I slept on the ground. You will have the quite comfortable mod because it would just suck to get a mood break immediately because we would be in a bad position. She's going to eat the rest of those berries that we have picked. We will have to designate a little bit more berries. So berry bush over there. If I select invisible area, I think that's just the one. Okay, tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to select all berries on the map. Click harvest till fully grown. And then I'll let her pick some of the berries. Oh, she got up in the middle of the night because she was desperately hungry. I'll let her pick some of the berries. Oh, there were some there. Um, and then just like select all the map, cancel, uh, so that she's not picking berries all over the map. Because she will pick berries that are closest to her first, which is what I'm looking for. All right, she's about to get up. Um, I think I'm going to go and set her on a biphasic schedule right away. Just because... She shouldn't have to wander too far. Because the biphasic schedule, she's sleeping twice a day, is bad if they're spending a lot of time at the edge of the map because they spend more time running back and forth for the sleep. But as long as you're not moving too far, you don't really lose any substantial amount of time doing this. And it ensures that your pawn's always in a relatively decent move. They never get too tired. They will always have the comfort thing. They'll try, they'll get the, the I think it's plus 10 from recreation fulfillment, um, which is going to be quite important to offset some of these debuffs. Let's see, uh, my my to-do list, we have plant rice, yes, shelter being worked on, uh, beds, traps is next, craft weapon, cooking station. Okay. Yeah, we're being slowed down a lot by her plant cutting. Uh, she's actually going to be really hungry first before she needs recreation. I'm going to force her to do that bush, thank you. Maybe what I'll do actually is I will cancel these trees. May as well still do those because they're going to be in the way relatively soon. And we are still going to need more wood than we've got. Actually, we might be okay because some of this has already been put down. It's five wood per wall. I think 25 for a door. And she's going to pick a few more berries. Okay, I'm going to call that good enough for now. Select similar things on the map. Cancel. And then prioritize hauling these berries. And yeah, I was going to say, hopefully stack them up and bring them home. Maybe the priority haul doesn't do the stack up. Now, I realize the stockpile is outdoors. All right, we'll, we'll deal with it soon. I just wanted a spot for it. And this will probably be where our stockpile will be. Short term, it'll be moved into this first initial shelter. Not so much this bedroom. There we go. We're indoors. Uh, we need a dumping stockpile so we can move some of these rocks. I don't want it to be too far from things. Um, right over here is going to be fine. Dumping stockpile set up. Urgently haul that rock out of the way because it's holding the door open, and that is terrible. Uh, we are going to allow raw resources to be at this outside stockpile, but the uh, pr priority is going to be low. And then when we get our actual stockpile set up, we're going to change some of the things with the rock stock. You're just doing some hauling right now. You do have some food. Your berries are here. Um, I'm going to set up a cooking station. I could just do a campfire. But I think a fueled stove is going to be fine. Oh, we do need metal for that. That's right. So as I was saying, I'm going to make a campfire first because we don't have any metal. So we'll do that. We'll put it outside because indoors it would get way too hot. It's actually a little toasty as is. Prioritize working on this. Let's see if we can get you to cook a meal before you eat any more raw stuff. So I'm going to set a rule here to 
Cook, attempt to cook four meals. If not, oh, not do it. Do until X. If you don't have any meals, attempt to cook one meal. Well, actually, attempt to cook four if you can do it efficiently. And do that. Our cooking skill is a, uh, oh, it's only a one. Yeah, that's not good. We're probably going to get food poisoning. But, I mean, there was a 2% chance we we're going to get food poisoning from the berries anyway. Yeah, eat that meal immediately. Okay. And you're going to cook some more. Oh, you didn't immediately get food poisoning. That's great news. I'm surprised you didn't just hold that, put that in your pocket. Don't they try to carry a meal around? I mean, you don't have any pockets. I don't actually know where the pawns are supposed to carry things generally. When you've got the mods that add backpacks and stuff, everything makes a lot more sense, but not so much here. All right, so you're going to sleep indoors tonight. It's not going to be outside. You're definitely not going to get... Uh, actually... Yeah, it goes below 16. 16 is the minimum comfort temperature, so eventually indoors will probably drop another degree. Yeah. Ooh, that's... That is quite chilly. Um, we are going to get a crazed animal attacking us soon. Let's get a crafting spot set up. And we will craft a bow, I guess. I'm just worried. Her shooting skill... That's the thing. Her shooting skill is so low. It's She's unlikely to hit, and then the thing will close to melee, and then we're going to have a bad time. So never mind. I'm going to make a club first. We're doing a club because it can be made out of wood. The damage difference isn't that substantial between, say, uh, stone and wood. Um, so we'll just have to deal with that. Oh, you need blocks, don't you? No, no, no. If you were making out of stone, but we can make it out of wood. I guess what we need to do is chop down some more trees. Uh, are we still grown? Okay. Also, clear that home area. Yeah, there we go. Now clean the outdoors, please. And yeah, hopefully that rice will come in relatively soon and we'll have a better supply of food. We don't have to worry about refrigerating rice. It won't rot for 40 days. Corn's even better, it's 60 days. So we have those numbers the right way around. Um, yeah, so as long as you're not cooking very many meals, because the meals will, will rot after, what, three days? As long as you're not cooking very many meals, you really can get away without refer uh, refrigeration for a long time. Uh, unless you're mostly hunting um, animals, because the meat will definitely spoil faster than that. But yeah, just the uh, the vegetable products, you're actually good for a while. I don't know what the timer is on potatoes. All right, craft yourself a club before anything else happens, please. Your crafting skill is four. It's not terrible. It's not great. Let me just reset you there, Wanda. But clubs, I don't believe, have a quality. It's only material. So 5.64 melee damage is what we got on this. I think the club makes more sense than that. Well, especially since we don't have metal. Yeah, it's going to be okay. And yeah, I think it makes more sense than the bow. I'm not running the simple sidearms mod, so I can't have a bow and a club equipped, even though I really enjoy that mod. I think it adds a lot of, like... It just feels good. It feels like good flavor to me. So yeah, you doing some relaxation here is fine. But, and you've still got a tree to be chopped. We are going to want the rest of the setup in the not too distant future. And then consult little production centers. Well, the other thing I could do is I could go and mine out some of the metal so that we could build a proper cooking station. But you know what? It probably doesn't make sense until we have everything else set up. So what I'll do is I'll unfor unforbid these walls. So that can be sort of how you fill your time for the next little bit. Chop down some trees so that you've got some material and work on constructing the rest while we wait for the rice plants to come up. Um, or we make a little tiny kill hallway. Well, we need, I think we need the walls up before we make a little kill hallway. Yeah. Uh, I might turn off the automatic refuel. I don't know, I suspect we'll want to refuel it at least once more, if not twice, before we get anything set up. All right, I'll turn it back on. Rice. Okay, yeah, we're going to need some more plants. Uh, berry bush. Select all. Harvest fully grown. We'll let her... Same thing as uh, last time. We'll let us harvest a few bushes, and then what we'll do is we'll deselect them all. Oh, there's a big group over here. Makes me think of playing, like, the Age of Empires games where you're picking berries early on. Oh, that's quite good. Oh, we should get a couple of pieces of, um... Heal root as well. Uh, select similar things on the map. Harvest fully grown. She'll just grab whatever's closest to her. Okay, 
I'm gonna cancel. I should botch that, which is too bad. I'm gonna cancel the rest of the berry bush stuff. We'll let her do maybe a couple of heal root. There we go. And then we'll cancel that as well. You're relaxing socially. Can I get you to haul all these berries in? Because you're gonna be hungry soon, and this way they'll be closer. Actually, I might force you to do a cook job as well. It'll make the berries last a little further. Although, she might be less likely to get food poisoning from the berries, which is the 2% chance, than she would if she were cooking. Yeah. I'll, I just let her do that. It's not as efficient, because I think she probably ate like 20 berries there or something similar to that. Actually, I could have checked to see exactly what she was holding. Um, and it just takes 10 food to make a simple meal. But I kind of feel like that actually might have been a little safer. I don't know. Although she will have to practice her cooking a bit more unless we recruit someone with cooking skill. I mean, she's just going to have to get over it and do it. Unless we set up a nutrient paste dispenser. We would have to mine a lot. I think nutrient paste dispenser might even need components. Three components. Yeah. So we have to mine a bunch of steel and that and then enough for get all our power going and everything. Yeah, I don't know how viable that is for a while. Now, the nice thing, uh, one of the problems with food poisoning is um, the way it works in vanilla in normal rim world, unless you've got mods, is if there's one uh, poisoned meal, it will poison the entire stack, I believe, because the way that it gets maintained, like everything in the stack sort of shares some stats um, or maybe it's intentional. Maybe it's not like a we're saving like, you know, processing or whatever. Maybe it's literally, well, no, one meal should spoil the rest. Um, so as long as we're just keeping very small stacks of meals, we don't have to worry about an excessive amount of food poisoning triggering problems. We'll cut down the rest of these trees because certainly they'll, they'll need to be cut at some point. And I guess I can unforbid these doors as well. And then, yeah, we can get rid of this inner wall here and this extra door. Relaxing by the fire. Yeah, moods are good. Okay. Well, I think what we're going to do is we're going to put a cut in. I think that's that's a fairly decent start to our little run here. Um, anytime now, I think Randy follows the same rules where uh, within the first X days, we're gonna get a mad squirrel or mad rabbit or mad rat. I think those might be the three. Um, one, one of the small creatures will go mad and we'll have to, we'll have to kill it. We will attempt to club it over the head with our wooden club and three melee skill. It'd be nice if we were tough. I would feel a lot better about taking half damage because we could lose a finger or an eye or something very easily against that fight. Um, we could stay indoors until the thing falls asleep and then go and club it, but I don't know how viable that's going to be. I think we're going to have to face that challenge and fingers crossed that it goes okay, because if it doesn't, we could just be dead very early on. But that is one of the reasons I did grab a little bit of herbal medicine here, um, because it spoils in 2.5 years. Again, lasts for a good long time. Um, even these berries last for a decent time without registration or refrigeration which is really handy. Um, maybe what I'll do, right before we close out, I will plan, uh, it'll have to be wooden spike traps, not a huge amount of damage, but it'll be okay. We'll plan one on either side of the door because if we get attacked, what we'll do is we'll go stand in the doorway. We'll probably set this to like stay open and we'll stand there. So anyone coming will likely have to come in from the side and walk through one of those two traps. Um, which I th I think small animals when even when they're manhunting, I think they might they might effectively have the nimble trait. It might be based on the size of uh, the creature. I don't think they're guaranteed to set off the trap, but it will give us a little bit of a chance. And then we'll build a proper trap hallway afterwards. Anyway, that is that. Folks, thanks a lot for watching. I'm going to see you next time. Bye bye.